recording. So we want to say thank you to everyone for taking the time um, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we appreciate you uh, volunteering, giving us your time to learn more about the Instance Troubleshooter application and the latest version of version uh, 3.0 that we've recently released. Uh, it's part of our larger uh, goal to always provide um, you know, the latest tools and and um, well approaches for customers to be able to uh, keep their instances healthy and to be as autonomous as possible. Uh, by all means, we still love to talk to our customers, of course, but um, there are times where you want to self-diagnose and, and do this on your own. And this is uh, one of the tools that we've uh, published in, and continue to uh, build out uh, for that particular purpose. Uh, today, we have some of our uh, the lead contributors and the product managers of, uh, here. Uh, so uh, and I'll let both of them introduce themselves, but we have uh, Magesh and we also have Caesar, um, and they will be our presenters today. So my name is Mike Hamblin. I'm your host. Uh, by all means, ping me with questions. I'm going to step back and allow uh, Magesh and Caesar to more formally uh, introduce themselves and then take the presentation away. So Magesh, would you like to start things off? Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, for folks joining uh, from across the globe. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, Mike, for uh, coordinating this uh, event as well as uh, uh, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Magesh Narayanan. I'm a product manager on the Cloud Apps team, which is part of the Global Cloud Services organization here in um, ServiceNow. I'm also joined by Cesar. Uh, I'll let him introduce uh, himself. Uh, and then I'll um, you know, follow through with the presentation. Cesar? Yes, hello everyone. Um, I'm Cesar Sandoval. I've been with uh, ServiceNow support for more than 10 years. I started uh, as a TSC. Um, that TSC means uh, front lines. These are uh, the fine folks that handle all of the cases. And, and as of recently, um, I, got, I started a role as a TSA technical support architect, which means uh, taking a, a higher level view of cases. So rather than just looking at one by one, I look at volume and uh, patterns and the, the goal of looking patterns and analyzing case data is to reduce time to relief for cases and to also reduce case volume. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Cesar. Uh, can everyone see my uh, screen, uh, the slide? Mike? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, awesome. So let's get going. Uh, so what we'd like to do to, uh, today is obviously talk about this uh, app called Instance Troubleshooter. Some of you might already be familiar with it. Uh, some of you might be new to it. Um, so basically what we'd like to do is just walk through a few slides uh, you know, about the, about the app and how, what, what it is and what you can use it for. And then after that, we'll have a demo uh, of how to use it and uh, walk through some of the functionalities of the, of the app. And then of course, we'll, we'll take a Q and A after that. And uh, feel free to uh, post your questions, like Mike said, in, into, the, into the Zoom Q and A um, you know, portion of it, uh, but uh, we'll also take a Q and A uh, at the end as well. Okay. So what is Instance Troubleshooter? Uh, instance Troubleshooter is basically a self-service tool to diagnose and resolve issues within your instance. Uh, it, is, it is used by the, it is meant for the ServiceNow admin. Um, it, you basically just uh, install uh, this free store app uh, from the ServiceNow store uh, onto your instance, and then you uh, run it. Uh, it. It basically scans your instance for known issues uh, that we have worked with our customer support team, like Cesar uh, mentioned, subject matter experts, and uh, some uh, key members of the technical support organization where they're familiar with the real world issues that uh, customers are facing within their instance. Uh, so we have built all these six as, as checks uh, within the app. So customers themselves can fix them uh, without having to call uh, support. So what this results in is a, a fast resolution for customers as well as a reduction of cases for our uh, technical support organization. So what, what is the app? Uh, basically, you know, we'll, we'll go through uh, some of this in the demo, uh, but basically it has a simple uh, UI with a card layout of uh, ServiceNow 
products and services that we support. Uh, it is built, it's like a service portal uh, UI. Uh, and then you can invoke the, the tool itself by just uh, a single click, like scanning uh, your instance for a particular um, category, uh, like so let's say mid server or email or authentication. We support uh, a bunch of categories and uh, products and services that, that are part of the ServiceNow platform. Uh, and then it you know just goes through the scan, uh, a quick progress bar of the of the diagnosis. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes uh, for the for the scan to complete. Um, and then the findings are shown in your traditional ServiceNow native uh, list view and uh, related lists uh, view of all the findings. And each finding is basically an issue, a potential issue that could manifest and cause issues within your instance. Uh, and each issue is uh, uh, comes with a clear description of what it is. Uh, as well as a link to the documentation and what to do uh, to fix it to which which property to change or what what to do, uh, and um, we also have um, a PA dashboard that is part of the app um, that shows some metrics uh, about your usage, so you can kind of track how you're doing uh, with respect to the findings and the and the scans. System requirements for this app, uh, it's it's pretty much. Uh, you know, uh, it's available. Uh, for, you know, in the, in the, in the releases, Quebec, Chrome, and uh, San Diego. Uh, it's based off of the instant scan plugin, which is available out of the box. Uh, and then uh, it also uses the uh, again the default uh, performance analytics uh, uh, capability as well, which is also available out of the box. So you don't really need any special licensing requirements or uh, you know uh, purchase uh, order and things like that. Uh, it's it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward and it's it's free it's free app on the store. You know you ask you know what what is in it for the for the customer what is in it for you why do you why do you have to care about this tool why uh, how is it going to be useful for you? Basically, uh, like Mike pointed out, you know we really want uh, customers to derive the maximum value out of the service number instance and for that you need a healthy instance. You need the instance to be working uh, optimally. Uh, as intended by the, you know, the ServiceNow product teams, as well as as intended by um, yourself or your customization, your business scenarios. So for that, uh, you know, if there are issues, and as we know, you know, there are a lot of customizations, it's a complex, uh, you know, uh, platform. So you want to uh, be able to resolve, find and resolve issues faster. Um, so, and we want to empower uh, customers to do that without having to always rely on our technical support team. Um, so this self-service tool was developed as a collaboration with uh, customer support, and all the checks in the in the in the app are uh, basically developed by the technical support engineers uh, as they have seen issues uh, reported by customers. And when customers themselves can uh, self-serve uh, by uh, using this tool, it provides relief to their issues faster without having to you know, log a, a case and have that triage, have that assigned to somebody in ServiceNow and them resolving it. Uh, and it takes time. And if it especially is a, is a let's say, it's not a P1, uh, it, it is gonna time, take time to resolve, obviously, because P1 issues take precedence over uh, low priority issues, but these lower priority issues obviously uh, could manifest into bigger issues down the road. And then the other thing is like, you know, by periodically running this tool and, you know, uh, fixing issues, you're going to have a, a healthy instance. What are some of the features of the uh, of the app? Uh, and again, uh, we'll we'll show these things in the uh, in the in the demo. Um, we have support for about 19 products and services. Uh, and what what they are is uh, when when I say products and services, it's basically a logical grouping of the functionality of the ServiceNow product, which is let's say authentication, email, mid server, uh, core platform, UX, service portal, and so on. And um, so any issue with uh, any uh, configuration issue with respect to these products and services, the app uh, you know, scans for, the, for, the, for those known issue, commonly occurring easy to fix issues uh, that you yourself can say, oh, you know what, oh, I didn't realize that this property was set to true or false, so let me change it, uh, right? So you might've forgotten something and we'll go over the demo, um, uh, some of these in the demo. The other thing is like you want to, uh, let's say uh, uh, you want to scan the instance periodically, uh, by, you know, like a weekly or daily or bi-weekly, you can do that uh, by using our uh, feature to schedule a scan. Uh, so that's what the scheduling integration is. And then the other is uh, as you scan and as you find issues, you might want to assign it uh, to uh, various parts of your organization. Like if it's an email issue, maybe it goes to an LDAP admin group 
or if it's a change management issue, maybe it goes to the change management group. Uh, you know, you might have different uh, uh, people or different teams working on different parts of the ServiceNow implementation. So uh, you might want to create tasks when there are these findings, so uh, so that it integrates into your business, uh, you know, business process. Uh, that's what the task uh, integration is. And we have uh, granular troubleshooting. Uh, granular troubleshooting is instead of scanning the whole instance, you can also scan a particular record or a table, um, and then the you know, findings and resolution we already talked about, and then the dashboard. And we also have uh, ability for you to provide direct feedback to us from the app itself. Uh, there are two ways you do that. One is, uh, you know, for the overall tool, you can click on, hey, if you have an idea, uh, if you have an idea for uh, for the tool, to how to improve it or a, or a new check, uh, you can click on uh, submitting an idea and it takes you to the ServiceNow idea portal and you can provide feedback. The other uh, way you can provide feedback is uh, for a particular check, if it was actually useful or not, uh, from within the finding itself, you can click on give feedback and provide us and that'll reach us and we can um, you know, evaluate that. What are some of the use cases that uh, we've seen customers use for this for and what uh, we think that uh, you, know, uh, you can use it uh, as well? Uh, one is, uh, like I said, you know, by having a periodic instance overall health check, uh, you are going to maintain a healthy instance by finding and fixing those issues. And then the other uh, scenario is uh, your uh, team, your team of developers are working on, let's say, a scoped app or other some other enhancements, feature development on your development instance. Uh, you can, uh, you know, prevent these issues from occurring in your prod instance by actually integrating this as part of your regular SDLC process so that you can uh, run these scans as part of your development check-ins. Uh, we've, uh, we've seen customers use, uh, use it in this capacity as well. The other thing is, uh, let's say you're running into an issue uh, and you want to see if uh, Instance Troubleshooter uh, has a check for that particular issue. Let's say you're running, having some issues with email. Uh, you can run the tool to see if it finds it. Uh, if it doesn't, then you can log a, a log a case like how you would have already done. And uh, if, if it found, found it, you can always uh, fix it as well. Um, and uh, that's that's one of the scenarios that uh, that you can use it to. Um, then the other thing is, uh, you know, let's say you really want uh, uh, to run it to maintain operational health of your instance for critical checks, security checks, performance checks, uh, and you can maybe do that uh, as well. Um, so that's kind of some of the use cases that you can use this app for. And currently we are uh, we're in version three. We just released it uh, a month ago uh, into the store. Uh, we had version two last year uh, in summer and uh, V1 was launched in February of last year. Uh, what we have added in, in version three is we have added support for uh, six additional products and services. I think now we have about 19 total. Um, and uh, we also added uh, 32 additional checks. And then we also made some UX enhancements uh, to the tool based on customer feedback. I will uh, now go to uh, you know, the, the demo and then we'll come back with the questions. And as you get that set up, uh, just want to remind that any, uh, for everyone actually attending is that you know, there are different ways to get in touch with us. You can uh, re post your questions via the chat or the question and answer section. And um, uh, we'd be happy to address those at the end too. So uh, just as a reminder, but uh, Mikesh, go ahead. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Mike, thanks for that, yes. Uh, can everyone see my screen, the browser window? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is, a, this is one of our demo instances uh, in which we've installed the latest version of the tool. Uh, you can invoke the tool uh, by uh, from the left nav, uh, type in instance troubleshooter, and I've actually, uh, and you, you'll see all the, these are all things that I've favorited, but basically you have a, a few menu items that will go over in this demo. So instance troubleshooter is the, is the name of the um, left nav app. Uh, let's click on getting started. This is kind of like the home page of the app uh, where um, this is where you start using it. And you can see that uh, these are all the various uh, suites, we call them as suites uh, or product categories for which we have checks in the app. Um, and um, each one of them, you can click on troubleshoot and then that'll invoke the scan by, uh, for, the, for the instance. 
uh, for that uh, uh, category. So let's say uh, for we're going to run core platform for this demo. It says, hey, and you want to run it? And then say yes. Basically, what happens is uh, it, it basically scans the instance for uh, a number of checks that are incorporated for this category. And then um, it comes back with finding, let's say you click uh, go to result. There are other ways to get to the results. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Now you can see that uh, there are uh, this many findings um, and the checks that were run, or these are all the checks uh, that were run uh, for this uh, product uh, suite. And let's look at one of them uh, for the for this demo purpose, right? Um, if you look at this, uh, it basically says that um, you know uh, you have debug turned on. Uh, basically, what what's going to happen is a bunch of uh, information is going to be logged to the database. And uh, if you don't watch this, this is going to bloat or increase the size of the database and can cause disk size issues, and that will make your instance. Uh, you know, run into performance issues or uh, even uh, go down. Uh, so what we want is uh, to fix this by turning debug off. Maybe uh, the scenario was that you you were investigating an issue and you uh, had turned debug on and now for, forgot to turn it off. So, you know, this is a check that says that, hey, go turn it off. So let us fix that. You can see the debug is turned uh, is set to true, so I'm going to uh, update it to false, and then we'll do a um, we'll do a scan to to uh, to show that uh, that was fixed. So now let's get back to uh, some of the other uh, capabilities. Uh, so let's say from here, um, you know, you can also um, there are a few other uh, capabilities of the app from here as you click on this one. Uh, this this vertical um, dots. So one is uh, you know for this particular suite, what are all the scan checks, right? So you want to let's say you want to first preview what are all the checks that are run for this. You can then see any. You can click on each one of them and that'll open up what the like for example this one. It's going to show. Okay, hey, inbound email is disabled. That means that the instance is not going to be able to receive any email. Uh, and same thing with outbound as well. So, so like for example, each one of those checks are um, looking for a particular issue uh, that you can. Uh, uh, that's all going to be included for for the uh, for this particular suite. Now that that's what that that uh, this one clicking on this one does. The next one is uh, as a ability to schedule. Uh, ability to schedule is uh, what I mentioned earlier, which is um, you know you want to schedule this uh, uh, the scan. Um, you know, so let's let's go through that, right? So it first asks, like, okay, hey, do you want to do it a full instance or with scoped app or an update set? Uh, let's say we do it for the full instance, and here we can say, so we can do say, hey, run it daily or weekly, monthly, right? Uh, or, or or custom. So let's do once, and let us do it two minutes from now. So. So basically, what we've done is uh, we've done um, we've scheduled the the email scan or the, or the scan for uh, uh, scanning the instance for the email suite uh, in in two minutes from now, and and uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes while we look at other things. The other thing is um, we also have uh, this thing called uh, scan task config. This is what I was mentioning earlier uh, in terms of uh, you know being able to create a configuration where Whenever a particular set of issues are found, let's say for this uh, suite, um, you know you want to uh, create a task and uh, have it assigned to a particular group. So let's do that here. So let's say for priority one and priority two, I'm going to do that. Say LDAP admins, market of active, and submit. So what this is going to do is whenever this can, this uh, there is a finding of priority one and two for the speed, 
uh, a task is going to get created for Delta admins. So when you come in here, this was what I was saying earlier, which is you, you will actually see that a task was opened. Uh, so let's give it a minute and then we'll see that here. So, um, and, and if there are any tasks that are opened for the suite, you can actually also see that here. And then the target scan is the one that I was mentioning earlier, but you can actually choose to run it on a particular uh, property itself. So the other menu item here is the is what I mentioned earlier, which is um, the um, uh, you know the results. So if you want to actually go see all your results, so let's see. So this was the one that uh, that was just run, the one that we scheduled. Uh, so let's click on that, and you can see that you know these were all run, uh, and you can also uh, see there are issues here. Outbound email is disabled which means that the instance cannot send email. So obviously this is, a, is an issue that you want to take care of uh, and so on. So that's what the, the, the results thing do. And then, uh, you know, we also saw that, you know, we ran uh, the, the, the scan earlier, which was this one. So now if you go to open tasks, open scan tasks, we see there was one that was created right here. So these are the uh, three, uh, tasks that were created. Um, uh, for, so, so you can see that uh, there's a task that is created for the LDAP admins for, uh, the, for the issues that it found, the, the priorities one and one or two uh, issues. So this way, you know, um, you, can, uh, you can be assured that uh, whenever a finding, whenever the tool scanned and uh, findings are found, uh, there are tasks that are created for the uh, people to go act on. Uh, and uh, that's that's what it does. And, and here you can see that hey, there are three scan tasks that are open. So there's one for finding. Uh, so yeah, you can also directly access the scan task config and the schedule scans also in the menu item. This was also uh, based on the feedback that we received from customers. And then the other part that we wanted to also show was the dashboard. Um, so when you click on this dashboard item, you're gonna basically see some basic uh, metrics and obviously this is a brand new instance, so we don't, we don't have a whole lot of metrics here, but you can see that, okay, hey, there are three scan tasks and you know, over time you're gonna see uh, you know, how many tasks were created. And so here you also have like uh, you know, execution by suite. What are the suites that you're executing weekly? And what are the findings per suite that, um, that are being uh, found? Uh, and then also a trending chart uh, for uh, the execution as well as the findings for you know, last 30 days some basic uh, metrics to see how you're doing. And then you can also see that, you know, the tasks go down or the findings go down that can give you an indication of how healthy your instance is and how useful the tool is. That's pretty much it for, uh, and this is what I was saying, I have an idea, it takes you to the idea portal. Uh, and a uh, couple of things here is, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we looked at the, the checks the checks are, uh, you know, the tool is built on the instance scan plugin, uh, and there are about five categories that any check could fall fall under, uh, and we have grouped it logically that all these uh, checks form are core platform checks, but then really uh, they're about like you know user experience, security, you know, upgradeability, and so on. Uh, similarly, uh, you have that uh, for for all of these as well. And uh, there are um, there are high priority uh, issues that you want to uh, pay attention to. Uh, that's the priority one and two, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, and and this might vary uh, for uh, for your implementation as well. So that's uh, pretty much for the demo. So let's go to the questions and answers. I see a few. Yep, we've been working, uh, Caesar and I uh, have been okay. working to answer those. So that's great. Uh, again, thank you everybody who's been, uh, you know, who have been uh, sending those in. Uh, just to recap, um, you know, we had questions like, uh, you know, the preferred instance to run this on. Um, in short, uh, it can be uh, installed on a subproduction or a production environment, um, no problem. But um, I guess maybe you can take that a step further and have recommendations and 
and just more information on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, um, you want to maintain, uh, you know, uh, uh, health uh, and uh, issues across your instances. Um, but uh, you know, to begin with, uh, obviously, you can run it on your your subprod instances to just get an idea of, uh, you know, uh, what kind of issues you're having. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, after trying it out, and then after uh, you know just uh, getting an idea of how to run this tool and what it takes to kind of act on them, then you can uh, also do it on your prod instance. Obviously, we recommend that you, know, you maintain, uh, you know, you fix these issues across your instances, and you know, prod instances is what would matter at the, uh, for your users. Um, so you can you can do it uh, on any instance. And I just want to add to that, <clears throat> that uh, the instance troubleshooter, it's a read-only application. It will not make any changes to any part of the application, either their customizations or data-wise, other than just the, whatever is inside that scope of the instance troubleshooter. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, thanks, Cesar, for that. There's one more question here about the, uh, does it correlate with the findings from the health scan that is reviewed with us monthly by, um, by our CSA? Um, no, there is uh, there is no um, overlap uh, between the two tools uh, right now. Uh, but we are working with um, the health scan team uh, to see how how we could uh, you know um, make it complementary. Um, this app uh, was uh, developed uh, with partnership from the global technical support team, like I mentioned earlier, uh, which is based on real world issues that um, customers are running into. Uh, while the health scan uh, is more about the best practices for upgradability and uh, manageability. Um, and that is kind of uh, created as, as checks too. Um, and another difference is this runs within your instance. So the data about your issues stay within your instance, while health scan has to be run by somebody uh, from ServiceNow. Uh, and it is also uh, a paid uh, offering while instance troubleshooter is a free app. Excellent. Um, I was just going to recap some of the ones that we answered, uh, just to give everyone an opportunity to elaborate. And you know, Magesh, if you wanted to elaborate on any of these, um, yeah, see, I was just looking kinda... into, and, and I think it's it's good. I think you you guys have answered. And and we had uh, something else to just uh, quickly uh, show. Uh, let me bring that. Up. Yeah, so uh, we can share uh, these uh, KB articles. Uh, you know, where, where there's a there's a troubleshooting, uh, sorry, instance troubleshooter uh, quick start guide on how to use it and and uh, you know conceptual understanding of what it is, and then also there is a detailed user guide that. Uh, obviously, um, that shows like you know uh, all the details of the functionality on how to use it and where to install it from. Uh, and more importantly, if you want to actually see uh, what kind of checks where uh, you know the tool uh, tool checks for um, without having to install the tool um, to, to to know what it is, you can also uh, review that. And uh, Caesar, do you want to just maybe take a minute or two to to uh, walk through a couple of checks here? Maybe on mute. Yes, I'll be, <laughs> I was. Uh, go ahead and go to the, uh, let me see, the access control, which is the first section. Yep. Oh, sorry. This is authentication. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to go over a couple of checks. Again, checks are the, 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 the engine that runs this instance troubleshooter. Uh, it engine is, is uh, I mean, the checks are the, the brain. So the tool is only as good as the, these checks. I'm just going to go. Just pick a couple of random and, and, and give you a feel of what type of things in the instance we're checking on. So the middle one there, ACLs using Git row count may cause performance issues. This is an important check because ACLs get run throughout the lifespan of an instance. So every time you click on a form, on a list, on a report, ACLs are constantly running. So it's easy to, to imagine a scenario where there's a get row count where we're, we're actually getting a count of all the records in a table inside an ACL. How that 
may cause a performance issue, um, especially if this is a, a large table with millions of records creating, uh, just calling a get row count um, will definitely will cause some issues. So what this check does is it, it, it views all the ACLs, get row count. If there is one, it will alert you um, to, to do something about this. Um, another check, uh, let me see. Can you scroll down to core platform? Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, so number two here, escape HTML should be enabled. And this is a security check. So there are several types of checks. This gives me an opportunity to tell you about the, uh, the types of checks. One is performance, something in your instance of configuration that can cause performance down the road performance issues down the road. Another one is this one that we're looking at, escape HTML should be enabled. And you'll notice the priority is one, it's very critical one. This is a security check, which means that you have a customization in your instance that if left uh, unattended, it may cause security issues. So you can read the description, uh, a malicious user can inject some code um, into one of the, uh, the your, your UI pages. So what this check does is it's it's just check for the property and make sure that the property is set to the right value to prevent this issue. Um, similar to this one is the one right next to it, restrict unauthenticated access to images. Uh, apparently there's a property here that uh, you can set on and off. Uh, if when, when, when left enabled, all of your images are, are secured if left, set to false, uh, your images might be left for the open public, the open internet to, to view. So that's that's a critical one. Um, let me see, you can scroll down to, uh, go to email please. And I'm just gonna touch a, a couple more here. And so uh, the third one here, guest account does not exist. This is this is something that we, in, in, in technical support, we do get several cases um, around this issue regarding email. The email, in order for us to process email, we need a guest account because a lot of times the email does not have a user tied to it. So in order to make some changes on the instance, when the instance receives email, it has to be tied to an account. Well, many times uh, a guest account the out of the box guest account gets either inactivated or deleted and that causes email issues. And a lot of times those are a little bit difficult to troubleshoot or not apparent initially because a guest account and email is not tied together logically, but, but they are, um, uh, I mean, some people might not think that they're tied, but they, <laughs> in this case they are. So what this check does is it's, it's just constantly checks whether the, the guest account does exist and it's, it's, it's actually active. Um, and uh, the last two I wanna just uh, show you here, email reader job is not running. It's the fifth one down. Um, another thing that usually does, even though email uh, in, inbound email is active, some customers may see that email is not being processed what that means is that a lot of times there's a backlog of email. Um, so, or the, either the email reader job just uh, stopped running and is, is stuck or it is missing or it is uh, very busy handling a large job. Well, this, this will definitely capture that. So in those cases where a customer is not receiving email, if they run instance troubleshooter check, this check will immediately let them know, oh, Right now there's an issue with email reader job. You might wanna go there and look at the job and see what it's actually doing. And the customer may be, may be able to troubleshoot the instance and get to root cause by themselves, um, avoiding that uh, opening a case with support. And obviously there's there's another one for the other side of the coin, sending email, SMTP sender job not running, which is uh, two, two down. So yeah, that's just, I just wanted to give you a, a, a feel of the types of checks. There are 178 checks. We are currently uh, in the process of adding a lot more. And like Magaj said earlier, these are all being created by support. Um, they are in the front lines. They know the patterns, they know the, the type of cases they get, and they are bringing these ideas to us, or even some TSCs are writing them, uh, writing these checks themselves. 
And uh, yeah, we're hoping that for version four, we'll, we'll have a lot more uh, checks. The more we get, the, the, the more issues we can get, uh, we, can, we can bring forth to the customer. That's great, Cesar. Uh, thank you. Uh, sure. And uh, there's one question I want to answer. Uh, what's the difference between this and the uh, instant scan app? Um, this was asked in the, in the webinar. Um, uh, this is built on top of the instant scan uh, plugin. Uh, so, and the instant scan plugin uh, is available out of the box with the ServiceNow, um, you know, family release, uh, and it is uh, it is meant for uh, you know um, the um, product teams to add checks on. Uh, that they think should be um, as part of uh, their feature, uh, uh, their, their features being used uh, as intended. And um, so they, they, uh, they sometimes add, uh, add checks there. So think of that as just more of a platform capability uh, for anybody to add checks. Uh, and what we have done is uh, we have uh, built this app on top of the instant scan uh, and uh, uh, based on uh, you know feedback from customers and customer support uh, to look for issues uh, after the fact that uh, the family release goes out and is adopted by customers. So, and the other difference is uh, we can update our app out of band uh, and uh, like quarterly uh, um, or uh, you know fix issues even more frequently than that. Uh, while the instant scan it has to be updated as part of the uh, family release. That's another difference. But uh, instance troubleshooter checks are also part of the instance scan checks, um, so you can you can see that in the in the in the instance within the instance itself. Hopefully that answers uh, that question. Uh, and what uh, you know, obviously we we'd like to if there aren't any uh, other questions, uh, we we'd like to really thank uh, everyone for taking the time to. Uh, attend this uh, event uh, and we're really happy to bring this app to you uh, and looking forward to hearing more feedback from you. So we would definitely um, you know, uh, ask that you try this and give us feedback on how useful it is. And if you have any suggestions for enhancements or checks, um, you know, please reach out to us through your regular channels uh, and uh, that'll, um, or, or give feedback to us directly from the tool. Uh, that'll reach us and we'll evaluate them for upcoming versions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And to add to that, thank you, Mikesh, is that, um, you know, one of the channels that we really try to promote is that we get a lot of feedback from our customers and we want to be able to meet as many of those requests as possible. Obviously, as our company has scaled over the last, well, uh, several, several years, uh, that becomes a tougher and tougher um, uh, well job to process. And a few years ago, we did uh, roll out the, uh, something called the idea portal. And let me, let me show you what it looks like if you're not familiar. Um, I can stop sharing now, uh, Mike. Sure. Sorry. I just grabbed it from you. <laughs> uh, oh, that's okay. I went directly to the community, uh, which is a, if you're not familiar with the community or you haven't used it that much, um, just as a side note, this is a wealth of information uh, from many, many different users. We're looking at 300,000 plus users, uh, 37 million posts um, every single year. Uh, it's particularly helpful for uh, P4, like lower, lower priority uh, cases or, or questions like how to as where the community can really shine. Um, but there's all kinds of things here. So that's just a side note. Um, for us specifically, we keep track of and then can vote up using the community's input, you know, different users input, uh, the priority of those recommendations or the requests. So for instance, you know, the ability to identify customized code on the instance. Well, that was put in and then it was voted up by four other people. Uh, we have the structure here and we definitely have ideas coming in where I think we always would love to, you know, um, compose the question to our users uh, of, of the application from our customers is continue to contribute and, and please 
feel free to put as many suggestions as possible in there and we can help promote those and, and your colleagues can help promote those. If you have something that really, really you want added, have, have your colleagues at work also log in and promote that up. And I assure you that is uh, one of the approaches to get uh, your request uh, to change from kind of a glimmer in your eye to an actual function within the platform. So that's just one thing I wanted to add. And then to wrap things up, um, you know, uh, there was also a question about recording. Uh, we are recording this, this webinar and um, there's a team that manages all of our webinars um, you know, from under the Ask the Expert umbrella. So I'll be working with them after we wrap up today uh, to be able to publish that and to share it so that you can forward it on to um, your teams um, or your colleagues. And also, um, I believe this will be posted to the community and YouTube as well. So um, that's all I had to, to add. I wanted to say again, Magesh, Cesar, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm very excited about um, what this has to offer. And also, we want to thank you, the customers, for number one, taking the time today to hear us out, to ask your, your very good questions, but also your thank you for your business and your continued engagement as we continue to improve our platform and offer the products that uh, we hope will make a big impact on you. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you for coordinating this and thanks for all the help in promoting the app to the community as well as with our customers and our SAM organization. Uh, this is a team effort. This is a collaborative effort across the board within ServiceNow as well as across the customers in the channel. I uh, really want to thank everyone for, for that and looking forward to you know, bringing more value to everyone. Thank you. Everyone. And stay tuned in the next six months or so, um, roughly, when we uh, put out version 4.0 and we'll invite you again. We'll, we'll post it and we hope to see you again. So. Uh, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and wrap things up. Um, Caesar, uh, Magesh, did you guys want to add anything else? Otherwise, we'll we'll call it a day. No, I'm good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Magesh. Thanks, Caesar. Okay. okay take everyone. care, everybody. Have a, have a good rest okay. of the day, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.